You know it's right. I've had people walk out of me before, but not. Before. That's right. I was being so charming. Video streaming at housefarms.com. I don't care for you if it'll keep your sludge you're trowling out. Must face little pimpstick. True progressive talk. Might be a good time for you guys to give up. Welcome back to the show, everybody, and welcome to our dear friend Philip Bittner, who is live in Ukraine right now, wearing, uh, I, I'm i going to assume, a, uh, a seized hat from, uh, you know, a, 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 a Russian that he's taking. No, he's, it's a, oh, it's a Ukrainian crest on there. And it's, uh, you want, somebody did some Christmas shopping, I think. And of course, we are live with mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Million, at Johnny Million on Twitter. Hi. Follow him, give him some love. Yes. Uh, new Convoy record is on the way. I'm just saying. It sure the, is. The new year is going to be full of lots more music and fun. I'm just saying, then, and it's going to be very upsetting uh, to, to the Kerry Lakes of the world. Uh, meanwhile, and to the Vladimir Putins, who we have to address right out of the gate, drunk Putin. Um mm. Sauced up Putin, um, your your uh, sure. your your experience watching he was so fill us in. I I could describe it, but I want to hear your take on it. Um, it was beautiful to watch. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been I've been listening to Vladimir Putin speak for far too long, going on twenty five years. I know his speech pat. Uh, yeah, far too long. I know his speech pattern. I know what he sounds like. Uh, he's normally very tight, very reserved, says exactly what he means to, means to say, very precise. But there he is in the Kremlin, in the gilded halls of the Kremlin, and he's mm-hmm. got a glass that's about three quarters full of champagne, yeah. a little crystal uh, glass, stem uh, stemware, and he's sitting there. And he's and he's not he's not talking he's not tight at all. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> just he's riffing, yeah, baby. He's right. he's, he's telling you what it. he really thinks. Yeah, and he's talking about how it's okay we're we're it's okay we're it's okay we're bombing the electrical <laughs> system. Yeah, because they bombed the bridge first. So it's okay. Right. Which they didn't, by the way. The, the Russians had been I mean, bombing. Just, the second the, I saw it, the first, yeah. the moment I saw it, I was yeah. like, I cannot. Yeah, no, I mean, on its face, that's that's baloney. Yeah. But um, I originally saw it on uh, on my social media feed, and and I was like, okay, somebody slowed that down or like has yeah. altered this video because that is him blatantly drunk. Mm. And there's no way that the Kremlin would allow that to go out. And then it Unless just they don't care it, anymore. More and more of it came out, yeah. and it was like, oh my god, he was drunk. Right, he was openly drunk at a at a function, talking out of his backside. Yeah, and um, and they let it get out, and they and the, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And and and, and, the, and the other thing is because I'm on social media with so many Russians, Russian speakers, Ukrainians mm-hmm. who speak perfect Russian and, you know, uh, uh you know, foreigners, uh, Westerners, yeah. uh, who are Russian watchers. Everybody started going, okay, he's drunk. Yeah, he's yeah. drunk. Mm-hmm. And you may not be able to pick it up if you don't speak Russian. Right. Or if you haven't observed and Putin, backwards does, but it, it sounds yeah. those of us who, who speak Russian or who have, yeah, it all sounds like Klingon. The, the yeah, old right. Mila, the old Mila Kunis line is that Russian sounds like uh, uh, Klingon to all of her, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. to her friends and her husband and her family. Right. Um, uh, so you you kind of have to have an ear for it. But the second I heard it, I was like, I can't repost that because I don't think he would allow himself to get that drunk. Right. Well, I. I will say, I think one of the so answers either very he well is, may be... Look, I'm not would, going to interpret why he would, would allow a, a video of him clearly intoxicated. Right. I would say a mixture of him being uh, drinking and possibly on pain meds. That seems to be the you know the, m- m- more of a reality of his circumstance considering that they are allegedly keep him, keep, keeping him afloat. Essentially, by the way, pardon everybody on the crosstalk because there's a delay between me and Philip 
because he's actually in Ukraine. So we're not talking over each other rudely. We're just trying to catch up and find the gap in everybody's conversation. So that will happen. Just get used to the idea. You know, you know, it's 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 and it changes in depth every time. It's not like a, a Chris Matthews reflex. Anyways, so go ahead, Philip, and um, fill us in on you know fin finish what your your thought was. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just. Well, I, I don't, you know, the, the, the interpret so the fact that the video came out and he's clearly intoxicated mm. um, was a lot, sent a lot of people into the whole like spiral of, well, why? What does this mean? What is this, you know, because a world leader rarely does that and certainly not a guy like Putin. Mm -hmm. So either, you know, those, those who want to see doom and gloom in, in Ukraine are saying he was celebrating. So he's he feels so comfortable that he's got an inevitable win in Ukraine that he's uh -huh. he's kicking back and he's he feels comfortable enough to to tie one on. Um, the other side of the equation, a lot of people saying he's clearly cracking under the strain. Mm -hmm. But then you know you you also bring up a very good point in that you know he he might have just not because he's on pain meds not have his tolerance for alcohol may have changed. Right. Um, Regardless, what I find really weird is the fact that the Kremlin would let that circulate. Um, so I, I don't know, but one way or the other, it was a very, very odd appearance. By uh, especially right. since Putin came into power, saying, "I'll never let another drunken stooge like Yeltsin right. take the reins of power in right. Ukraine." Or in, right. in Ukraine, oops, and, there's a slip. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, um, it's kind of true in, in Russia. His his whole thing was I will I will never embarrass the country, yeah. Well, and also uh, maybe he was just celebrating the the mall Sorry. fire. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the the only reason. Because if uh, people who weren't following on that, uh, this g ginormous mall burns to the ground like the the size of you know uh, it like uh, it was like seventy five thousand um, mm -hmm. square feet like this huge apartment block essentially an entire block burns to the ground um, in Moscow, not to mention that the U.S. has basically given mm -hmm. tacit approval because the Russians are attacking infrastructure that if they want to use drones that they've got on their own or that they built on their own to attack uh, inside Russia, that's on them. We're, they just can't do it with our HIMARS is all. And we're not going to give them stuff to do it. But, if, you know, but the rest is their decision to make. We're not telling them what not to strike. Yeah, and and I I think it's important to make the distinction that the, the the DOD and the State Department have said we don't. It's very specific. We don't mind if you do it, just don't use our stuff to do it, right? Because then we feel that that will be crossing a red line with the Russians, and mm -hmm. they will feel legitimate in attacking in retaliating directly against. Uh, NATO, and we don't want that. So they're making a very clear distinction. They're doing it very publicly. Blinken came out and said it to the cameras in a press conference. So there's no there's no confusion. That's this is a sovereign Ukraine's decision to mm -hmm. attack internally within Russia, but it's got nothing to do with us. Right. Um, and I think also, that was smart. Yeah, very much so. And, and it kind of removes that whole like puppet we're pulling the strings thing is basically saying that you know we've been while we're supplying you with this stuff we're kind of in for a penny in for a pound to some degree and since the russians have decided that 92 percent of the things they're going to be sending into ukraine at this point as far as bombing are going to be civilian infrastructure water systems electrical systems and all that kind of stuff then it's kind of unfair of us to say but over that border is unfair like you can't cross that border which is right you know tens of miles if not 50 feet past you um if that's you know that that's your decision um i also before we get to the break at, which is coming up i want to address something because i i you know you and i both follow a lot of these uh um the these channels on telegram and others from you know inside russia that kind of you know and you've got intel on the ground there or whatever but i saw some stuff very specifically that I wanted to address with you, I'm sure you've seen, that are extraordinary, um, and, you know, and again, if true, you've got to, you know, always factor that in, but they're enormous. One is the Noah's Ark story, which is that 
Putin is planning a bug out. And the other one is about the effectiveness or the viability of 87% of the nuclear arsenal in Russia right now. The mess And that, that stuff, we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, I want to read some of that and then get your take on it as well and see what you've heard on the, uh, you know, from there on it. So we'll be back right after this. It's the House Sparks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCPT Radio, Chicago's sure. Progressive Talk. I know I'm only on one day a week. I get it. I'm going to have to jump on uh, GarageBand and start sawing something together. This is the House Park Show. And then a guitar note. And then progressive. And all, yeah, it's going to be good. Hey, Hal, did you mean something like this? This is the House Park Show. And then a guitar note. And then progressive. And all, yeah, it's going to be good. The Hal Sparks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide. Yeah, it's going to be good. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Don't forget to follow Philip Itner on Twitter for as long as it lasts until it cadavers. Um, at <laughs> Philip Itner, a one L in Philip, because he, he's just cool like that. And two T's in Itner, because he can afford them. Um, I'm at Hal Sparks. Wow. At I can't believe you almost made me say that out loud. Someone in chat says you look lovely in that hat. Yeah, oh, see? your name is uh, very sneakily obscene. You almost All right. got me, Edith. <laughs> Obviously, it's a fetish account, and we won't be quoting it anymore during this adult slash family Sorry, show. You're done. All right. Now, um, uh, so there's a um, there were two stories that popped out to me in this stuff because I go you know, through it, and a lot of it we'll see. You know, like we were talking about earlier, that Kiev, uh, you know, is is basically you know said you know that like the the americans and and nato commanders have commit have clarified their position that they can strike with their own stuff all they want if they buy mun- munitions or or what have you or they even or develop I suppose, their own yeah they're allowed to do it in in the same way that they did it with the water drones to hit the crimean bridge which is part of the mm-hmm. fear point which brings me to this piece so there was um in following in the footsteps of uh, one of his heroes, uh, Adolf Hitler, apparently Putin uh. is planning a bug out in, 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 uh, called Project Noah's Ark. And he's got, um, initially, there's several locations where there, if things really hit the fan in Russia and he's got to leave so he can enjoy his $200 billion in relative peace, like Pol Pot or something the rest of his life, he's, he, one group, um, Kovalchuk is supposed to lead this uh, check out. He was sent to check out China as a possible place where they could go to. Probably the Russian parts where the border is and that, you know, the, there are Russians, ethnic Russians who are on the Chinese border who are technically Chinese who live in Russian communities otherwise, but on the border of, of Russia. Latin America, Argentina specifically, which is where the Nazis uh, went after World War II, where they were going to bug out to. Those, of course, that didn't go of, go to the Antarctica and, and go into hollow earth, I suppose, and preserve Hitler's brain in a jar, if you like that storyline. But that was run by um, a, uh, a guy named Sechin. And then uh, oh. Yuri Kirillin, was that the, the right-hand head of Rosneft, is directly involved in on-site work to figure out how they do it. He's an American citizen. He's got good connections with BP and others. So he's, there are ships they could get in, apparently, that would take them to these places, uh, I guess, protect, dressed, you know, hidden in oil drums or something. That's the Noah's Ark project. Um, and then the, uh, and well, let's talk about that for a second, that they're already apparently prepping for that. Maybe that's why Putin was liquored up. Well, and and again, yet another story that seems to have been leaked out of the Kremlin itself. I mean, that the yes. place has become an absolute sieve, right. and it's not been like it's not been like that. So things are to say what you want, but things are clearly not going well internally right. within the Kremlin because all of this stuff would never have come out into the light of day five, you know, three five years ago even. Mm-hmm. Um, it's they're the clearly folks inside the Kremlin are freaking out. Uh, mm-hmm. Otherwise they wouldn't be leaking. They wouldn't be leaking like this. Now the idea that Putin could, you know, feign his feign his death. Cause you're right. going to have to, you can't have, you can't just get on a boat and go because mm-hmm. the entire world will come looking for you. Right. Wherever place you go and hide at, if it's known that you're still alive, they're going to be under pressure for you know, as long as Putin is alive sort of thing. 
to right. turn you over. That's right. So he's going to have to do this either in some form of high secrecy or he's going to have to feign his death. Yeah, um, sneak out of the country wearing Edward Snowden's face as a like Hannibal Lecter. That, a that Jim Pembry, talk to him, damn it. Um, right. So uh, that, I think you're absolutely right that it has to be there would have to be some greater plan beyond that. You know, pretend that you were covered in petrol and set on fire, as it were. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're uh, planning that. Um, but that is. Did you? Not- yeah. Go ahead. No, I was. I, 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 I gotta say, did I ever tell you my Hitler's skull story? I think I may have. Uh, no, but you have to now. You can't yeah, just no, bring yeah. up. <laughs> now that I've Hitler's mentioned, skull. can't tell. Right. My, I, did I have a Hitler's skull story? Yeah. Uh, another weird twist in my time in Russia was uh, they they claim to have the fragment of Hitler's uh, skull that has the bullet from him blowing his brains out, and wow. and. Uh, in the late 90s, for some reason, I'm trying to remember what it was, but they trotted it out, and you could go and look at it. And it was surreal beyond belief that right. you go in. I, I was ushered into a room. We all were. I mean, this was open to the public. Mm-hmm. And there was a, there's a single stand in the middle of a room, mm-hmm. well, you know, not an enormous room, but, you know, like a, like a living room sized place with right. you know lighting, but the only thing was a glass case on a on a pedestal in the middle of the room with this little acrylic stand where there was a fra- a brown fragment with a, a very circular hole. Almost it looked more drilled than blasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they said that's Hitler's brain, and that was their way of that was their way of of kind of reminding the world that it was the Soviets who stumbled across the, Adolf Hitler's body, and that. You know, there was nothing to this conspiracy See, theory I'm, that uh, I'm disappointed very weird that, stuff. I'm disappointed that they didn't have it, have put a handle on it, and use yeah. it as a mug. And that's how they <laughs> determine who will be the new ruler is that you drink, uh, you know, a, a large beverage out of, well, uh, of Hitler's skull. Yeah. Well, it's the old Dead Kennedy song is, you know, don't forget to try our turkey dick screwdriver. It's one part uh, purple Kool-Aid, two parts uh, gin and a jigger from aldehyde from the jar with Hitler's brain we've got in the back room. Right. Yeah, exactly. These, Good old dead Kennedys. That's right. Um, so the other story I wanted to bring up as well. Um, not to get off the point. Sorry. No, not at all. No, it's, it's uh, <laughs> that, uh, believe me, there are, there are a lot of parallels between H- Hitler and Putin these days. And they're yeah. the exact opposite of how our, uh, you know, our, our faux aggressive uh, friends um, tend our to paint it friends. in some ways. Yeah. Okay, so the other one was, this is on Friday, December 2nd, Russian President Vladimir Putin held an operational media uh, meeting via video link with the permanent members of the Russian Security Council. We've already said that after the main part of the meeting in a closed format, we discussed the report of Security Council Nikolai Petrushev, which reported problems with the ability to use 87% of Russia's nuclear missile weapons, um, which they were unviable. They are basically just radioactive garbage, 87%, which means the other... 13% Thirteen percent are tip top. I'm sure they're not missing parts or anything. Like that's just the ones you can eyeball apparently and tell they're never going to fly. So, but there was another report of a rather large discussion regarding a second topic from the same report. Petrushev reported that according to available information, the Crimean bridge could be completely disabled in the next two months, allegedly with the support of the Anglo-Saxons, meaning the Brits. Using the latest weapons of the armed forces of Ukraine, and I think they're saying that because of that water drone, because they used some British mm-hmm. parts to make the water drone. I think that's why they say, with the help of the Anglo-Saxons. The armed forces of Ukraine, they are preparing to strike two or more pillars of the Crimean Bridge, damaging the supporting parts. According to the experts who got acquainted with the details provided by the intelligence and compiled a summary for the report to the president. If such a plan of attack on the Crimean Bridge is implemented, the restoration of the bridge will take at least six months. In the process of discussing this topic, almost all the participants in the meeting expressed the opinion that the destruction of the Crimean Bridge would make it impossible for Russia to hold Crimea and the occupied territories of Kherson, Zaporizhia, and part of the Donetsk region of Ukraine by military means. Putin said that in any case, he considers it necessary to continue massive missile strikes on Ukrainian energy infrastructure facilities and thus force the Ukrainian leadership to negotiate. Putin insists on the need to, quote, arrange holidays in the dark for Ukraine, that is to increase the strikes on the Catholic Christmas in the Western Ukraine, 
and for the new year throughout Ukraine. Despite the president's mm -hmm. demands, several participants in the meeting expressed doubts about such tactics, which caused Putin's displeasure. At the end of the meeting, Putin announced he was waiting for proposals on possible options for actions in the event of a strike on the Crimean Bridge and closed the meeting. In the near future, Crimea may be cut off from transport links to Russia and ferry crossings will be used exclusively for military purposes. So the evacuation of the military population will be practically impossible. That's from... Mm -hmm internal uh, meetings in Russia regarding this. And by the way, the source for that, which is one of these telegram channels, which is, you know, part of this whisperer campaign has been right previously multiple times yeah. in Putin's reaction to things in Russian plans. Yeah. It's the it's, bridge is the, the bridge is a mess. The bridge is an absolute right. mess, despite the fact that he just drove a Mercedes uh, SUV right. across it to show that it had just been restored. But the bridge has always been a mess, and the bridge is going to continue to be a mess. Right. It's falling into the sea because, the I, I, you know, again, I spoke to a Navy C, uh, a military attache in Kiev uh, mm -hmm. to the embassy here uh, who straight up told me that we sent Navy SEAL uh, divers down there years ago, years before this conflict. And that mm -hmm. we were aware that the thing is sinking into the silt of the Kerch Strait. Uh, it's the reason right. why nobody, they have tried repeatedly to build a bridge across the Kerch Strait. Uh, the Germans tried it in the Second World War so that they could get an easier route, route into Stalingrad. Right. Um, uh, but it's, it's impossible. You can't, with the current technologies that we have, you yeah. cannot build a bridge across the Kerch Strait because it's all silt. It's mm. just, you know, depths right. and depths of silt. You can't build on it. So delicious. it's falling into the sea. It's falling into the sea no matter it, what. And it sank into the swamp. But, so I built another one. So I built the second one. swamp. And it sank into the swamp. The third one, it burned down, fell over, and then sank into the swamp. But the fourth one stayed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're wasting time. We're, we're, we're getting on these tangents. We're, we're making no, ourselves chuckle. This is time, but I'm right. looking at I'm, I'm looking at the clock, and there's so much to talk about. I, yeah, we got it. Right. Also, we also got to talk about Ilya Yeshin. We got to talk about. There's so much to talk about. Anyhow, yes. but the the bridge. The we got to talk about Bakhmut. Uh, yes. the bridge is is the bridge is a failed uh, project. It's going to be a failed project no matter what. Right. Uh, the fact that it could be expedient, it, it, it could be hastened in falling into the sea by uh, Ukrainians using their sea drones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's advantageous for the Ukrainians because they're right in the middle of a war. They can't wait for the natural order of things for the bridge to fall into the silt. So they might mm -hmm. very well do that. Now, if indeed they do that, Putin's absolutely right. It's Crimea will be unsustainable, uh, right. especially especially if things in the east of the country, and maybe this is a natural uh, segue into talking about Bakhmut, but yes. before we move off from, from the bridge, Putin's right. If, if the bridge is inaccessible um, and priority will be given to the military if it looks like uh, the thing is going to – Hence under why they're risk. getting people out of there now. That's, that's, that's right. You know, makes total sense why they've been evacuating right. people currently because they know eventually that will be the only conduit. Right. We got to take a break. You were absolutely right. When we come back, we're going to yep. talk about Bakhmut and this obsession and the Wagner Group, uh, you know, attempting to yeah. take it. And but not we also got to talk about Ishin. Yes, we got to talk about we'll Ishin. Okay. Yeah. After we come back uh, with Philip Bittner, uh, follow him on Twitter, and then of course uh, watch his uh, vlogs on YouTube as well by uh, following the links on there. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Uh, I thought there was going to be like a new one every break. I was so excited. You want more, Hal? We'll give you more. Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide on Chicago's Progressive Talk, WCBT 820. Hoo Welcome back. So um, there is, uh, all right, there, I mean, there's so much to cover. Bakhmut has mm. been this obsession by uh, the the Wagner group, especially they've been throwing people after people, after people, after people trying to seize this particular territory, um, for a while. Um, give us your update on it. And I, I obviously know my take, but I want to hear what's going on over there in terms of that right now. 
Well, I mean, there's there's a lot too, Bakhmut. Yes. And um, I mean, Zelensky said that uh, in essence, the place has been leveled. Um, and there yes. does seem to be an obsession that the Russians have about Bakhmut. And it's it's weird. A lot of commentators and a lot of Ukrainian uh, strategical thinkers are saying there, you know, Bakhmut is not essential. There are alternative. The, the idea is that Bakhmut would would sever their supply lines, the Ukrainians, mm-hmm. and that's why the Russians are obsessed with it. But the Ukrainians say, no, that's not the case because we have alternate road systems out. The, you have to understand that the east of the country, there are a lot of road systems, which the rest of the country doesn't have. But there's a, a network of roadways out east that that is kind of unique to that part of the right. country. Uh, so the you, the Ukrainians say no, we don't have to have Bakhmut. The only reason we're staying and fighting for Bakhmut is because you guys keep thin- sending waves upon waves of soldiers trying to capture this town because you think it'll be so strategically important. Mm-hmm. And all we all we have to do is hold our lines and just wipe you out, much like they did in Mariupol, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you know, holding on to Mariupol kept them pinned down for you know months basically and let the rest of the country prepare for when you know the inevitable fall would happen so even if the russians do take Bakhmut, the ukrainians are saying we have alternatives and all you've done is wasted a lot of it you've expended a lot of men and material trying to take it there's an argument that is being made that is because it is the wagner group that is taking the, the lead in the attack on Bakhmut, that this is uh, uh, Prigozhin, who is the head of, of the Wagner group, mm-hmm. um, named after, by the way, the, the German composer uh, who was uh, subsequently used by the Nazis. So who are your Nazis, guys? Um, uh, anyhow, the Wagner, the Wagner group, this may be a way for Prigozhin to show that the Wagner group is a viable and useful part of the Russian military and that it, it, it will be like a victory. It'll be a, a trophy that he can then take back to Putin and say, look, we're, we are really effective. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it, it's not going to be a significant uh, change in, in what the Ukrainians can do in terms of their supply route. I mean, obviously, um, you know, uh, Russian mm-hmm. successes in the Donbass, uh, nobody in Ukraine wants to see that happen, but, it's Bakhmut has turned into this just absolute grind, you know, this meat right. grinder. And it, for what we don't, we don't really know for what. Right. Uh, so Bakhmut, but there's, there's in the last 24 hours, there's discussion that maybe the Russians are actually about to seize it. I saw a, a, a eyewitness on the ground uh, posting video today. Uh, that it was still in Bakhmut on the Ukrainian mm-hmm. side. So, you know, who knows? But right. the Battle of Bakhmut seems to be the the thing that's taking uh, a lot of focus uh, when it comes to the actual war fighting going on here. So we, we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but uh, it's, it's one of those things where uh, right. the Russians just uh, insist on trying to take it, and they're just sending I, – I also spoke to a security analyst – well, not a security analyst, a security um, uh, a guy hired to, to provide security uh, mm-hmm. for NGOs and journalists right. and stuff like that. And he had been in Bakhmut. And I spoke to him about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and he said he'd never seen anything like it, that the, 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 the Russians would just send wave upon wave upon wave of soldiers at these positions. And all they had to do was just drop artillery. And they it's just so weird. slaughtered them. Well, and again, yeah, uh, there they, was this their, idea their doctrine that, is yeah, bad. There was this, there was this idea that uh, the you know the Wagner Group was like getting paid by the land seized, but they didn't get have to give the money back if they lost the land. So it was just like this right. Pez dispenser Evan where Blow. they, yeah, yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, I heard a, that too. What a terrible notion that they would just like send these guys in to get killed, c- claim it, send you know, tell Moscow like we got this, and then fall back. And then claim it again and go, oh, we lost it because they were bombing, but we got it back. And then get paid again. Like, at yeah. the, and, and, well, this a is Prigozhin, you know, Prigozhin wow. is the guy who went, Prigozhin is the guy who went to all the Russian prisons and, you know, emptied a whole bunch of prisons and, right. and, you know, adopted them into the Wagner group. Uh, you know, so they don't mind if those guys get, get killed. They, you know, not that they would care if they were normal conscripts either, but, 
I mean, there's a lot of talk. Have you heard about the, the, the discussion that there's a lot of um, friendly fire or what we call blue on blue now mm-hmm. uh, in the Russian ranks because of all these conscripts and because of all the guys that have been mobilized who are using things like artillery and they right. don't know how to properly range it. So they end up attacking one another. I mean, the whole the, the, the Russian side is is a mess in so many different ways. Well, you, you heard and about the Russian it, Rambo, right? The guy who was just like he literally was conscripted. This is guy who was conscripted and then he was sent to the front lines and then he got separated from the Wagner group that he was with because they bugged out and left him. So he decided to just walk. He was trying to find some place to be. Didn't yes. know he was back in Russia. Saw some police officers, thought they were Ukrainian and opened fire on them. Now he's on trial for murdering police officers. And his defense is, I didn't even know where I was. Um, yeah, a mess. Like that, that, it's, I mean, it's, that is, I mean, that's the currency. I mean, you'd be drunk too, I suppose, if you ran yeah. that organization. Well, and, and, and there's your, and there's our segue talking about trials to talk about yeah. Ilya uh, Yeshin. Right. <laughs> So I'll take Ilya, a segue any way I can you, find it. Absolutely. So, um, and, and explain who he is. Um, uh, and, and then like tr- Putin literally today was like, who? Um, yeah. When somebody asked him about it. But yeah. go ahead. Well, he f- feigned, he probably feigned. He knows exactly right. who Ilya Yashin is. Ilya Yashin is an opposition, par- uh, he's a uh, opposition uh, politician who dared to uh, condemn the Russian military's actions in Bucha at the beginning of the war. And right. he, and he said, those guys acted, um, you know, they brought, they, they were war criminals and uh, our soldiers are not acting honorably. And of course you can't say stuff like that in Russia. So he um, just, I believe it was yesterday uh, was sentenced to eight and a half years in prison for saying that the massacre of Bucha was a bad thing. This is the difference between yeah. the Ukrainian and the Russian side. So don't you dare tell me that it's the same thing because we have vloggers and we got we got this guy out in uh, in Kharkiv, this you know vlogger who uh, who's out there who's openly saying that the you know the Zelensky regime is a criminal regime and should be deposed and is very pro Putin. They they held it, they detained him for a few days, but ultimately they they let him go. They they do not arrest people. For, for exercising their freedom of speech in, right. in Ukraine. They, they only arrested the people who were puppets. They were all, like, they'll, they, if they found out they're getting messaging yeah. from Russia to, and, and yeah. purveying that it's, inside the country, it, but you can still have a crap uh, attitude and still stay in the country. It's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you are, if you are actively putting out propaganda and if you are like what happened in the churches recently, the Russian Orthodox church is still very strong here and they're very pro Kremlin. And there were Mm -hmm. raids that of course, a lot of people went crazy about, about, Oh, Zelensky is cracking down on the religion now. No, it's because those priests were openly supporting and giving support to pro-Russian movements within Ukraine. They were right. hiding flags. They were hiding money. They were hiding propaganda materials. Yeah, they were materials. materially involved in the actual Given conflict. Given to them, as, right. As Given to, to them. Ideas. You can, right. You can spout whatever you want on YouTube or TikTok mm-hmm. or whatever else. Put out whatever whatever you want to say. You are you are able to say it in Ukraine with obviously some limitations, you can't yeah. shout, you know, the old fire in a, th- a crowded theater yeah, yeah. sort of thing. But, you know, there's there's restrictions, but by and large, you are able to speak your mind. Ilya Yeshin spoke his mind in Russia, and he's going to be in a Russian prison for eight and a half years. The same thing with another opposition politician, Vladimir Karamuza. Mm-hmm. Um, he, all they did was speak their mind, but you cannot, there's a law in Russia, you cannot Yeesh. speak out against the special military operation. And that, to my mind, is a clear indication of the difference between the two sizes, mm-hmm. two, between the two sides. So I, I don't, I don't support this idea that, oh, it's, you know, they're both the same. They're not both the same <laughs> Well, that's all. the, that's, I mean, that's uh, both siderism is the, yeah. you know, is the cowardly fallback on a lot of these things and, and creating, 
actively creating a, a, a both siderism where none exists by playing down the, the villainy of one side and playing up the villainy of the other and trying to create this balance artificially in, in your picking and choosing and in the ramifications of that. You know, it goes to the whole difference between like um, Japanese internment camps in the United States, which were wrong around World War II, mm. and we learned our lesson from and we did not kill anyone in that process. Although I would argue people were allowed to die in certain situations because they were denied um, right. medical care and those kind of things, which is exactly why it was bad and exactly why ne we have a never again policy about that kind of thing. And by the way, was a plot line in the Karate Kid for the for the record. His own yeah. his wife and son died in complications at birth because they were interned. Mm -hmm. That, you know, uh, Miyagi's uh, family, that was the, they told that story. We do that. We're okay with that in the United States. You can put that in and remind us of how we did wrong and we need to do better all the time, right? That is a constant thing. Uh. Whereas, you know what I mean? Whereas there is no, as a matter of fact, if you put something like that or equivalent of that in a Russian film, you'll go to jail. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you I, there's so much to talk about, and I, I, I want to yeah. hit on so much of it. And I know that the, the guys uh, in chat will be giving us really good questions when yeah. we come back from the next break. But just I to quickly em. squeeze one more thing in here, yeah, when you good. talk about yep. freedom of speech and, and like facing the, the ugly past that we have to come mm -hmm. to terms with, yeah. that Russia will never do, and it's a, a, a large part of why they're fighting this war, I think is that they don't ever want to have to look in the mirror. And so as long as they're an empire or as long as they see enemies behind every tree, because, of course, they're always being besieged, they don't have to look internally. I think there's a huge psychological part of why this war is happening. But I just saw today this really disturbing video mm -hmm. by these teachers out in the Far East uh, in Russia saying, you, our soldiers who are fighting the good fight in Ukraine, don't worry. Um, when you come back, you know, we'll take care of your kids uh, while you're away fighting the good fight, and we'll teach them the right history. Don't you worry about that. We won't teach them the bad history, like what's right. being taught to children in Ukraine. We will make sure that your children are taught the correct history. It's the same and thing the, the Republicans are doing in Florida. That's the whole point. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. you, uh, yeah. you know, it's this idea that it, your country's only good if you only pay attention to the good things that it's done. And and then, again, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And the, uh, the funny yeah. thing is they're intentionally ignoring the parts that you don't want to be doomed to repeat. You're ignorant about the bad stuff. Then you are. That's the stuff you're going to go. Well, we're. You know, we're always right, so therefore we can do whatever the hell we want. And the same thing is true, with, you know, with how, you know, DeSantis and that crowd are trying to talk about American history. That, you know, the Russians want to create this context where their own people will eventually go, well, I mean, we've never done anything wrong. So if we occasionally have to mm. do something terrible to protect our way of life because we're right. so good and we're so lovely, it's totally justified when it isn't. That's the whole point. Um but then, you know, let's take a break because we're right at that point or whatever. We'll take questions on the other side. And I'm sure part of what you're, you know, you want to bring up as well will bring, be, will come up in that. I hope uh, so. As well. So we'll be back right after this. More yeah. questions. It's uh, just from, too much. Yes. And okay. more show and tell for those people who are watching online. Oh, great. <laughs> well, very exciting. Might even have a post-show couple of minutes that don't involve kittens today. We'll, we'll be back right after this. I know. I am happy, you are happy, let us be happy together, whether the weather is cloudy or sunny, I will always be a funny honey bunny, I am lucky, you are lucky, let us get lucky together, whether the weather is cloudy or breezy, I'll be there to say, hey, come on, let's take it easy, because isn't it nice to have the friends that you do, and isn't it nice that the sky is so blue, and isn't it nice to say I love you, chugga chugga choo choo, woo woo. I am smiling, you are smiling, let us smile together, whether the weather is cloudy or stormy, I will still be there in the morning, I'll be right by your side in the morning, I'll make you breakfast in the morning, I hope that you like cereal. Yay! Yay! So, uh, well, I, I have a green screen glove, so I was able to make a flying Patron uh, dog shot, um, which is, I mean, by the way, Adorable. always fun. 
So, um, uh, yeah, if you missed the show and tell, check out the live stream at uh, infotainmentwars.com. We don't need the documents. We have it all memorized. And, of course, uh, twitch.tv slash Sparks. Subscribe today if you have Amazon Prime. It doesn't cost you a dime, and it really helps the show, and it keeps me on the air because this is the gig now. And, um, yes, and, and uh, Philip is showing... Um, Chris, uh, Ukrainian Christmas ornaments, including Phil a bomb sniffing yes, dog. He's standing behind a newscaster. Yes, right. <laughs> so, um, Are we live? questions. Yes. Uh, All right. So, here's a question. Yep. Be pragmatic. Great name. What mm -hmm. are the Ukrainians doing with the POWs? I mean, they're 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 holding them in prison camps. Um, they are uh they are trading them, them. they're trying to probably not tickling them no not so much um they, look uh, prisoner the treatment uh, the ukrainian treatment of russian prisoners is actually one of the things that i am critical of um uh, because they've also Sorry, Sorry. done thing they, they've also done things like um m you know have them call their loved ones on speaker phones and the Ukrainians are like, we have your your loved one. We have your soldier. Is there, you know, you know, how do you justify? You, you listen to what your own soldiers is telling you about how things are going. And I'm not cool with that. Right. Um, and, and then additionally, they do things like they will interview them on camera and then they will put that that interviewed material, which is against the Geneva Convention. You're not supposed to oh, use yeah. prisoners mm -hmm. of war for propaganda. Um I'm not cool with any of that. I don't. I don't look at Agreed. Ukraine with rose-tinted glasses. Um, mm -hmm. I will be critical of, of Ukraine when I feel it's appropriate, and I think it's appropriate in that case. Mm -hmm. Having said that, of all the crimes that have been committed in the in the world in, in this war so far, um, comparing the massacre of Bucha or bombing the 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 theater in Mariupol, killing hundreds of children, and compare yeah. that with putting a video out of a, of a disheveled Russian soldier saying, I feel bad about the war, um, in the grand yeah, scheme of things, and it is a sliding scale, scale yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm less perturbed. And also, look, I am not, as much as I'm not going to put rose tinted glasses on, I'm also not going to put my, myself in the place of the Ukrainians, who are fighting mm -hmm. an existential war. So... Right. I'm not crazy about it. I'm not cool with it, but that's kind of what they're doing with the prisoners of war. But they're also, you know, but they also do have prisoners of war camps, and they are mm -hmm. they're feeding them and clothing them. They are not right. they are not physically mistreating them. There's no evidence of that. There's no reports of that. There, I'm they sure that there and are more provisions than the. Than they the probably ones on the front they do line. in the trenches. That's right, right. 100%. Yes. Um, uh, a hundred percent. And then they exchange them for their own soldiers. That's. Anyhow, that's that's what they're doing with POWs. Let me and also let me let me explain something to to people to make them understand that in in modern society and in a functioning country, one of the how you treat your POWs is actually in and of itself a defense decision because it is sure. something you can show off and say we are better than the people attacking us, and it helps you. Not just in, you know, if, if people die in your care or they're mistreated or summarily executed, look at what happened in Armenia and Azerbaijan, for example. Like it threw that whole um, situation into muck almost immediately because that video came out of them, you know, shooting um, prisoners of war yeah. that uh, effectively any goodwill that they had had about being attacked was totally destroyed in that instance with just that thing. So it is... It, it's strategically smart beyond even if you you might even have the notion where you would want to attack or because you feel hate towards these people for what they've done to your country. On top of that, though, you know, it it ha they have more value alive, healthy and able to be returned home, both as you know, you can trade them for other people. And also because you can point out to the world that you're you're being decent in an, in an indecent situation. Um, do you have yeah, Julia, question, Julia Davies, Julia Davies put, a, put a thing about uh, that on Russian Media Monitor uh, this week about the Russians themselves bringing that point up and being like, you know, let's not spread this idea of we're going to take no prisoners because the Ukrainians will do the same thing to us. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it is absolutely a discussion being had on both sides. Right. But yeah, let's move on to the next question. Yeah. Sure. Um, Nick Rich wants to know how your uh, schedule lineup is going. 
good. I did a couple of, I, I, of course, now I'm doing uh, the Tom Hartman show regularly on Thursdays. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe we're, we're set for 12 Eastern uh, moving forward. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'll do a little top of the top of the uh, hour segment with Tom uh, weekly on nice. Thursdays. Uh, I did a couple of podcasts, but you know, look, I mean, I still, you know, I'm still looking to expand my voice because, yeah. and I, and I look, I, 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 today when I was out shopping, uh, Chris, mm-hmm. doing my Christmas shopping, I stopped in at the Intercontinental Hotel um, to get a, a cup mm-hmm. of, you know, get some coffee, uh, get out of the cold before right. I went down to the open air market. Um, uh, below uh, St. Andrew's Church, which is beautiful. Uh, there's a wonderful open-air market down there. But it's cold, so I went to go get coffee. And the Intercontinental Hotel is where a lot of the foreign press is based. And it just reminded me, I walked in there, and everything was beautiful, and all the there were trees and uh, Christmas decorations, and mm-hmm. it was warm. People were sitting around having a beer and coffees and chatting and it was very very pleasant and lovely but they're not living the street level of of living with the ukrainians which is what i'm doing now they are doing a very important role i'm not going to disparage my colleagues in the foreign press corps especially the ones who are here with boots on the ground but they fly in and they fly out and when they're not on the front lines or when they're not at refugee camps or when they're not you know going out and doing their their reporting they live in a pretty rarefied air of the Intercontinental Hotel. They don't know what it's like to go from day to day living amongst the Ukrainians. And I do. Um, that's mm-hmm. the, at the, You remember this, how the very, very beginning of this entire war, yes. I said to you that I intended to do things very differently than what the press corps was going to do. Because, I, yeah. I look, I'm a veteran of broadcast news three decades in broadcast news. I knew exactly what they were going to do. They were going to go seek out the sexy stuff, the stuff Mm -hmm. that was going to get eyeballs on so they could get clicks clicks and ratings. And I knew they were going to do that. And I'm not even disparaging it because somebody does have to be out there doing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I have arguments about the way it's done. I have arguments about the format. All of them don't have to. And in addition to that, at the very beginning of the war, I told you my intention was to be off the front lines, living with the Ukrainians, um, speaking with Ukrainians, living in Ukraine Mm -hmm. to give the context, to give the depth of understanding of what this conflict is really all about and how these people are living through this conflict. So when I say that I want to get on more podcasts and I want to spread my, my message further and farther, it is not simply to, to feed my enormous ego Mm-hmm. But it is also because every time I really that, do think I have a perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is I think uh, I have a perspective. Uh, do you? Okay, are you yeah. in a twelve step program for that? Um, no. uh, tell me about your mother. Uh, no, right. <laughs> so look, uh, I, I'm I'm just I'm 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 so happy with what the sparklers have done, and I'm so happy yes. with what people have done on my behalf to spread my message. But I I don't want to let off on the gas on that. Right. Because no, there, we'll keep at there it. aren't keep many at of it. us. There aren't many of us out here. I know a, a yes. handful of people who are not Ukrainian. Now, look, there are also Ukrainians doing this. And they mm-hmm. come at it from a, a unique perspective as, as well because they are Ukrainians. And so right. they have an insight that I can't deliver. But I am a foreigner mm-hmm. who has a long history in this country living amongst the Ukrainians. And I, and I think that perspective has worth. And I want to spread i want to get a large uh, careful johnny uh mm-hmm. i want to get a larger audience i want i so it's okay. let's not let off on the gas folks not i will talk got to three minutes left. i will talk let's, to podcasters yeah. with the smaller or the biggest yeah another question yeah. another question and sure yeah. uh, quasar wants to know um sh- they wanted me to ask about victor bout returning to russia and what putin's plan might be with him I mean, Victor Boot is a bad guy. Uh, Victor Boot, uh, we've talked about this. I wasn't crazy about Victor Boot being uh, released, but I, I knew that Griner had uh, – she, she had to get out of there. Um, yeah. And then the whole the discussion about Whelan and, and Fogel, um, you know, they're very, very – It's a, look, it's a very complex thing. Um, I'm happy she's free. I really am because she was, she was set to die in, in that prison mm-hmm. if they wanted to kill her. Um, so I'm glad she's out. Um, I think Whelan should get out as well, uh, mm-hmm. and Fogel. Um, but 
Boot is a bad, bad guy. Could the Russians use him in, in order to gain more weaponry? Because that was his area of expertise. He was an arms dealer. Yes, I do believe that the, he still has viable contacts within that world. And he probably knows where a lot of the bodies are buried and he can I exert his influence. So I, I do not think it is simply he was let go. I, I think that also the Russians do have a, 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 an intention of using him uh, to fight this war. Uh, he has openly said that he would, if it wasn't for his age and physical condition or whether he'd go and fight Well, no, nobody's asking him to go and fight. That would be a waste of his, uh, abilities and expertise, but they yeah. could use him to, to get more weaponry. Absolutely. Yeah, I would 100%. say the, the one caveat to that is that his expertise was taking Russian arms and selling them in the rest of the world. And yes, Russia's in the exact opposite problem right now. No, I agree. I agree. But he's got a Rolodex. Yes, he's got a Rolodex, and he to, and he's got to leverage. get refunds, right? Yeah, um, like uh, can, remember those AK forty sevens we gave you? Can we have those back, please? <laughs> like uh, to some degree, yeah. if they send him outside the country, though, he's oh he can't he's, he's never dead man. he'll never step foot he'll never step foot out of Russia ever yeah. again. And also he he could he could end up uh, you know uh, uh, you know taking the wrong step out of a. Through a fifth story window right. at some point. It, uh, gravity. Absolutely. He might have a gravity allergy. We got it. We're at the end of the show. Yeah. Thank you so much, Philip. Merry again, Christmas, follow, everybody. Follow Happy holidays. Yep. We'll see Yay. you next weekend as well. And uh, hopefully you can join yes. me on Wednesday for the show and yes. we'll dive deeper yes. at infotainmentwars.com and of course at twitch.tv slash Spread the word. Yeah, spread the word. Help them out. And Johnny, have fun at the dentist. Um, yeah. Go get Jordan, drilled, Johnny. We'll see you go. Yes. No, well, easy. All right. We'll see you next time. So week. gross. <laughs>